Good morning and welcome to Rocket Rackers TV. We are here live today for a Money Match Day special. Money Match Day March 2022 with our morning match Jack Coop versus Neil Baker for £8,600. You are watching the Money Match Day. We bring you big money matches if we can. Blackpool pool money matches. Yep, today's competition is the 19th of March. And we've got two streams for you today. Jack Coop versus Neil Baker and Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes. This morning's match from 11 a.m. is for £8,600. And the afternoon match starting from 3 p.m. if possible will be for £400. This morning's match is a race to 21, so 41 possible frames there. That may push the start of the afternoon match back a little bit. But we'll see how that goes. Today's session, we've got this morning's session. We've also got Mark Montague versus Gary Sefton for £500. Luke Cross versus Joe Ham for 400 Connor Davison versus Matthew Richardson for 300 Ben Lindsay versus Rich Chalk for 200 Daniel Baird versus Matt Lambert for a ton. And Martin Smith versus Lee Knapp for a ton. Most of those matches will be a race to 15, unless otherwise stated. Today's cause for a thought is PDSA. If you're looking for someone or an organisation to support doing good work this year, why not consider them? They're the public dispensary for saving animals, saving pets and changing lives, and supporting low-income families, ensure that their pets stay nice and healthy. Today's venue is Rocket Ronnie's in Southampton. There are no memberships required, so you can pop on down. They'll be open today from 10 till midnight, as they are every day other than Sundays, where they open 10 till 10. They've got over 30 tables of various disciplines for you to play on, as well as some dartboards. They've got six big tellies and a projector screen showing all the live BT sports. They've got a fully licensed bar. With hot and cold food, served 12 until late. They are family friendly and wheelchair accessible. And they also run a Junior Q Sports Academy every Saturday morning from 10 p.m. until 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. It's a great way to get your juniors aged 10 to 18 up to scratch on the bays. So why not bring them down for the morning, get them queued up. Get them out of the house. Our next stream today will be the Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes money match. Race to 17 for £400. That is from 3pm, so don't go anywhere today. And today's stream sponsor is Appaday Multimedia, providing creative digital solutions, including webs, streamings, creatives, and socials. Appaday Multimedia built the eight arena, eight ball arena platform, and is also running the Rocket Rackers TV channel on that platform. So if you are looking to get involved somehow, you can get hold of me, Lee Ingram, via Facebook or go on the Rocket Rackers TV website or the Appaday Multimedia website and you can find contact details there. So we are now just waiting for our players to get ready. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with all your friends and hit that notification bell if you want to make sure you are informed of any matches in the future. I will be periodically walking around the hall gathering the results of the other money matches throughout this match.
And we've got Jack Coop just giving the table a good iron. Jack's played plenty of matches for uh, under Rocket Rackers TV competitions before. He's got mostly wins there, as you can see. And this is Neil Baker's first match on Rocket Rackers TV, so he has no match history there. We know Jack Coop is a very competent player. And with the amount of money on this today, we must assume that Neil is too. Of course, much of that money will be backed by their friends. Anyone who knows about money matches in pool will know that people often put little bets on. So each player will be bringing £4,300 each into this match of their own money and of other people's money. So they'll have people watching today, hoping that they'll get a return on their investment. This match is brought to you by Rocket Rackers TV. Please like and subscribe. And we'll keep bringing you live pool streams from Southampton and the surrounding area. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm joined in the booth today by Mr. Aaron Jones. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Yeah, very well, thanks, Lee. Uh, looking forward to this um, money match. Uh, nice pot. Uh, between two uh, very good players. I will be honest, I've not seen Neil play before, but obviously if he's um, taken on a challenge of uh, the wonder boy, Jack Coop, then he um, he must be half handy on the base. So looking forward to uh, this one. Race yeah. of 21, so a bit of a bit of a slog, but we will get there. Hopefully we'll get a few uh, break dishes out of these two. Yeah, I'm hoping so. I mean, we all know how attacking Jack is. Um, like I said, not don't know about Neil's game but black ball rules normally denotes that you've got to be pretty attacking so um, we'll, we will soon see how he uh, approaches the match um, I'm sure we will see a few dishes though that would be nice yeah, it looks like the players are just getting ready now to lag for the break so we'll go over to the table view for that there we are So here we are, we've got Jack on the red and Neil on the yellow. Red looks a bit pacey to me. Yeah. So it's like Neil will start off the match. So a straight race of 21, off scratch, none of these funky starts. Um, just playing straight off, nil nil. First of 21, scoops the pot and the bragging rights for at least another few months. Some offers there for someone standing in as the ref. Of course, that'll be between the players. Rocket Rackers TV don't make any decisions on the play. We only observe. So it'll be up to the players to be sportsmen. Well, this is frame one with Neil Bear. Baker to break. I'll tell you one thing you will notice quite quickly on this table is that it, um, it's not very kind to the break for a ball ball potted. Mm. Bro we broke a few times prior to this match having a quick knock, me and Jack, and I think only on one break did a ball go in, so that will hinder the chances of many dishes, but I'm well, sure once a queue and arm gets going, they will put a bit more into it. Yeah, what I've noticed over the last few streams certainly is um, the dry breaks come at the beginning of the match and then as the players get used to the cloth, they start finding finding a way to get a ball down off the break. I 
Thank you for everyone who's just joined us. You're watching Rocket Rackers TV. This is a money match between Jack Coop and Neil Baker for £8,600 in a race to 21. And Jack takes first blood there with a red. Well, he's got one of those reds out. And he's got the other. And he's on a shot. Yeah, he's developed them, but they, they're not... Um they're still not sitting great, and the black's a little bit tied up now as well. Yeah, it looks like it goes into the left middle pocket, but that's probably about it. A little bit of test of Q in there, but he's um, left near with a, a reasonably safe yellow there at the top of the table now. So Neil set out his stall there, he's just um, covered the pocket, trying to keep it tight. <coughs> just about covered the angle there for the up and down for the red, which is lucky because that is a big pocket at the top. Positioning of these yellows down the table just slowed Jack's game down here. Might be beneficial at this point for Neil to take the yellow over the pocket just to get going. That is in no rush. Yeah, he doesn't need to move that one yet. It's, it's not as a nil shot to get it in the bag so early on in the frame. He knows Jack's got a problem with this red uh, in amongst those yellows at the bottom. Feel free to drop a message in the chat if you're back in one of these boys. Yeah, it's still a bit quiet up at the club at the moment. Obviously, early doors. Um, not as much entourage as there was for the uh, previous game between Jack and Sean Morris. Yeah, it was quite a busy affair a few months ago, wasn't it? Lots of interest in that one. I think it was 10 grand, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 10, yeah. Yeah, it's not in a good place there. No, he's not really going to be able to. He, he may get contact, but he's, he's not really developing it. Mind you, it goes into the mm. bottom right pocket now. He's happy with it there. Well, Neil's got his first chance here, I think. He just needs to um, work out how he's going to pot that yellow in the bottom rail mm. or the black. It might be worth it's just fine. canning in it off onto the one over the pocket. And then he doesn't have to worry too much about how accurate he is with the pot. could probably take it after this one. Yeah, if he gets over there, he can just plant it onto the other yellow over the bag. Which is what he's going for. Oh, nice 
nice sensible shot there. He's run a little bit far, but he's still got a shot on. Uh, he should be pretty bread and butter. Barring a disaster, looks like it's looking like 1 0 to 0. Yeah, it was a good clearance to get down onto the black there. And he makes it 1 0. So let's get our match stats up there. Just one dry break so far, just one frame in. Nothing really that you can draw from that so far. I think the first frame is normally quite tentative on the stream. As we're now on frame two, Jack Coop to break. All right, he's really pushed into that one. It looks dry though. Yep, that's what I said in the previous frame. They can split absolutely fantastic. They just don't seem to want to go in the pockets. It looks like he's got a couple of reds that he can go for here. Oh, he's missed that one. Okay, so here's where Jack can turn the banners on. He's just got, he's got one tricky red on the left-hand rail by the middle pocket. Mm. But he can develop it using the other red. Might even try and get it out after the next shot. That's a nice uh, angle up here. Yep, Dan Hemphill, he was on the stream the other day for a Challenge 21 victory. And he finished top of Group D. And he's just said that table's horrendous to break on. I think that sentiment is shared by everyone who graces the table with their presence. Thank you for tuning in, Dan. As in the previous frame, uh, Neil played a safety shot quite early on by covering the corner bag. He's done the same again here by covering the top bag. Um, I think that's going to be his general theme of today, to try and tie one of Jack's balls up and then wait for the right time to strike. It's a very shrewd game plan. And that's a nice little touch there. in no rush, just making sure he develops those problem balls early on. A sign of a good player. Yeah, I think he's going to make Jack think today, and um, that's uh, it's, a, it's a good way to go. Get the head ticking over. Sometimes you can overthink shots. I don't know if a uh, skill shot will be on. I don't think the angle's quite right for it. Unless he can um, screw across from the top red 
top left red. And get the cue ball to nudge the yellow down afterwards. Might be a good option. Yeah, he didn't want to pop that red there. He was just trying to cover the bag. Yeah, he still has that one on the left rail just over the middle pocket to deal with. Although he could... Uh, he might be able to play it up to plant on the one over the corner bag. But it's not quite in the pocket enough for that, I don't think. Well, there's that attempt at a skill shot. He can have another attempt here. It was unlucky, that was. Yeah, the thing is, he's, he can have another go at it off this shot, but he's still at red. It's still mm. difficult. So he's just... He's just stopped them to move this red, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a clever shot there. He knew that he could have probably gone for the skilly, but he's not going to get on that red. Mm. Yeah, it was a great effort, Dan. I think the yellow was just too wedged into that corner pocket to go anywhere. Just seemed to uh, die on the cushion. Oh, close to being a foul. It's made it a touch easier for Jack. Nils, all of Nils' yellows are up on one end of the table. Not sure if any um, of Nils' entourage is watching the stream today, if you could tell me where he's come down from. Obviously not a local to this venue, so obviously travelled down because uh, he's seen the pound signs. Obviously a decent player to be playing for this size pot against a quality opposition like Jack. Ooh. He's unlucky there again. Um, He's got one last chance to do it and it doesn't look an easy one now. Yeah, it's difficult because you've got a bit of traffic now as well with the two yellows in the, in the bulk. If you can find it though and hit the red full in the face... Thing is, even if he can get through to the red and knock the yellow in, there's so much congestion, the uh, cue ball can go off anywhere and he'll find himself snookered. Kind of force into it with the red where it is. I'll tell oh, you what, what a fantastic shot. I'll tell shot. you what, people. That's the shot he wanted to find, and that is plum sauce. That was a bit of magic, that one. Yeah, nice little controlled shot. Got a straight back to the corner. Yeah. We all know this boy can play. What a great shot to develop that red. Yeah, he went all the way down to his last chance to do it. And he took it perfectly. Great shot. And that's uh, tied it up. One apiece. Long way to go, though. I think somebody needs to find the uh, bottom of their pocket and put a fiver in the jukebox. Yeah, it's a bit church-like around here at the moment, isn't it? As Neil Baker breaks frame free. Is that red going in? There we go. So we've got our first ball off the break. Right, looking where the cue ball is, he's likely going to opt for a red. Two tricky balls, one on the rail, one by the yellow uh, near the nearest to the black. That does not go in the corner.
It was indeed a great shot, Dave Pollard. Thanks for the comment there. Couldn't have landed any better. Okay, so that's still an open table. Dan was saying that um, Neil's from Liverpool. Well, he's not the only scouter in here today because Gary Sefton is playing Jamie Close um, in a money match for £200, I believe. That should be a reasonable game. A few people have um, written Jamie off, but I think that'll be closer than you think. Closer Jamie. than close. Yeah. A UK garage for you there. Um, but Jamie's game has improved. He's starting to think about the uh, his shot selection more. Um, so it won't be an easy game for Gary by any stretch. I think that'll go down to the wire. Neil just playing the long game again. Yeah, that's his go-to safety shot to try and take control of the frame I think he's left this red though into the corner yeah nice shot just needs to leave himself a nice angle now because that red only goes into the bottom right corner might go in the left middle but he wouldn't want the cue ball behind it. foot short there from where I think he'd want it to be. I think he's still got the angle to cut that into the corner though so he needs a good shot luckily he's got the uh, added bonus of the yellow being over the corner for the skilly Yeah, it stops the in off at least Yeah, and then he's going to have a pretty tough shot on the black in the middle but so be it That's very unfortunate. He's, and that's probably because he put he's he's put the backspin on it, and it's just give the cue ball that extra oomph to go in the bag. Mm. I think if he played that a little bit more plain ball, then the white stays up. I think Neil will take his first shot just to bring this yellow down on the rail. Oh no! He'll just get behind it. Yeah, he's gone gone for an attacking shot there to start with a bit of pressure on this rail ball yeah, he's got good position there for a shot into the left middle yeah they should be dot to dot just needs to top it through a bit get himself a shot into one of these two yellows into the right middle bag now Oh, well, well. Well, the double doesn't look likely for Jack. Unless he finds the gap between the two yellows, but... You might have to take it up to the uh, top right pocket. Yeah, the, the yellow uh, over the middle, left middle, there's a little bit too far out to go for the uh, cannoning off. So he needs to find something. If you play it right, uh, that black could go through those two yellows, but it has to be very accurate. Yeah, it looks like you're going for the cannon. Oh, he's oh, just, just going for the straight cut pot. Cut it in. Wow, what a fantastic cut there. Jack makes it 2-1. 
that's why they're playing and we're sitting on the stream because they see shots we don't and he's just cut it in 2-1 Jack yep, sometimes the best solution is the simplest one Lee Knapp's just come up to nick the iron. He's brought up a load of dry cleaning with him. <laughs> <laughs> Saves so buying one, I guess. Apparently he's got a date tonight. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> I'm sure he's nice, though. Frame four. Jack Coop to break. Well, We've got Here two we reds go. and a white. Sod's law, that is. Ball's flying and everywhere, but the cue ball's gone in as well. I think that we need a little bit of a response here from Neil. It was a bit of a tentative um, affair after Jack fouled with the cue ball to take the clearance out. Mm. So we need to respond here with a nice little solid clearance. Yeah, he's only got five reds in total to clear now, and and they're all potable. Yeah, this um, and these look lovely. Yeah, I don't just think... Just overrun that a few inches, and that's why he's taking another quick walk around the table. Hmm. Yeah, the cue ball want to go up away from this red, naturally. He's managed to just push it into the far side of the, the knuckle and hold the cue ball. Yep. And he's got a... Medium black to the middle. Looks good. And that's 2-2. Two, two. And that's our first dish of the match. That was a nice quick frame there. One minute, 30 seconds, including picking the cue ball out of the trough. Ryan Bacon says, go on, Coop, give him a lesson. I don't think there's much that Jack can teach Neil, though, judging by that frame. This is frame five with Neil Baker. Oh, and it's happened again. A red two. down and a cue ball down. Two for two on the old cue ball in off. And uh, looking at this spread, you wouldn't bet it going to be another dry dish either. Yeah, I might fancy the yellows for this one, although there is, there is one or two problematic yellows. Unless he can get a... Uh, He's going to use his free shot to develop this yellow. Is it going to go down? It is. Yeah, it's a nice shot. He took that one first because he knows he's got the plant on the right-hand rail with the yellow on the cushion. So He's got a couple of plants who probably need to play here. Oh, wow. Yes. He's going to need to take out this yellow over the pocket now. Unless he wants this difficult cut into the middle. Yeah, an no ideal world he'd like to have planted it, but he, he's going to have to just bring it out and play that one down the rail. He'll try to touch it there. He's unlucky. He's starting to run out of position a little bit. And there's a touch attack in that one. I I know he wanted to move it because it's a, a rail shot, but it went. Needs a good shot here. And that's going to miss. It's popped out quite a way as well. all go for rich I mean uh, the 
There's a bit of traffic into the bottom right pocket, but you can put that into the bottom left. That red nearest the black. He'll have to clear his other red first, I think. I think he may have been hoping to just come a bit further with that one and, and take this lowest red. Yeah, the key shot here is how he gets on that red above the yellow and black. If he gets on that nicely, then he can take the frame. It's a reasonable angle. It looks a bit straight to me, this red. You want a bit more angle than this. Mm. But it is the right side of the red, at least. The angle will naturally want to bring the cue ball down the table. Yeah, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult positional shot, this one. He's got a shot. It's going to be difficult to get onto that last red, though, I think. Yeah, you've got um, you've got a couple of options here. You can either go for the straight pot and try and push the white over to the side cushion or cannon off the yellow to clear the bag in order for that red mm -hmm. to be able to go in the corner. And that's, that's the shot he's looking at, I think, just by the way he's queued up the yellow, which is probably the better shot. Right, he's gone for the straight part and he's left himself a double. And yeah, Dan, who is rich, Lee? Who is rich? <laughs> yeah, looks like it's missed, so... And it's on for Jack to clear these up now. Nothing's in the way. Nothing's particularly problematic. I can confirm, Kev Butler, that the table has been ironed. It's been ironed several times this morning, I think, hasn't it? Meticulously. We're not ironing it again, that's for sure. Nice shot, a little bit over the run. Nice little double cush. Just wants to come off the cushion here. Yeah, that's fine. He's okay. He's yeah. okay. And a nice little clearance there from Jack to make it free too. And I'm going to take a short bathroom break. We'll see you in a minute, Jones. This is frame six. Jack Coop to break. He's got a yellow down and the white stayed out and a red down. A little bit of congestion down by the bottom right hand side of this table at the moment. Judging by the comments in the chat, I think Kevin Butler and Dan Hemphill need to have it out on this table. Oh, 
Good workman doesn't blame his tools. Jack's taken. Oh, yeah, I messed that up. Just get the colours right. Now bear with me. That's a wonderful little cut double there by Jack. Well, now has got a yellow into this bottom left. He does have one problematic ball at the other end of the table. Plus one on the rail here. Looks like he was going to take a safety. Oh, wonderful little shot there. Maybe not exactly what he was aiming for. He's got another double. Where's this red, though? Well, it's a mighty fine cut, but he'll go for it. And he's left it. Oh, he's put the cue ball down. Now, Neil needs that pocket. So he might take it upon himself to clear it now. And leave himself the run out on these yellows. He could just uh, use one of his yellows to push it out of the way, which he has done. No. Nope. I've just asked Jamie to put some music on. I, God forbid, know what he's going to put on. <laughs> See a safety coming up here. Yep. League match, you probably still would have went for it. When you're playing for £8,600, you play for the tuck up. Unlucky. Yeah, you don't want to find yourself a few frames behind early on in one of these matches, do you? You want to keep it close all the way, if necessary, if you can't get ahead yourself. Yeah, I think you're right there, Kev. We're pulling off a few aggressive doubles like Jack has done this frame. It shows that you're capable. Shows that it's not going to be easy to leave yourself safe. Mm -hmm. Well, this should be free free. I don't know if he's 100% settled at the moment. Mm. 
a comfortable shot. That's a perfect bit of pace on that. Oh, he's, he's put his arm into that one and he's, I don't know, he's got the angle. I think he's got the angle. Yeah. Just. And he makes it 3-3. Three, three. That was a hairy moment. Mm. That was that was quicker than uh, Kev Butler thought it was going to be. <laughs> Only joking, Kev. 3-3 three, three then. Nothing to decide between them so far. Tick for tack. Thirty-one concurrent viewers on the stream. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Lee's put a lot of effort over the last months and months to uh, get this stream looking as good as it does. So all we want to try and do is reach a wider audience. Yeah, and these breaks are starting to come in now. As they're getting used to this table, knowing what it requires. We've got a yellow down. And that black's tied up. It's going to need development early on, regardless of which colour you are. Oh, and he's Neil's done just that. Now this one down by the bottom left cushion. It's just a little bit problematic. But I might be able to get an angle just to flick the red away of this shot thank you Flaxman Yeah, we'll be hosting you versus Josh Barnes in the afternoon looking forward to it and Neil's just able to sneak around that red there and get that yellow down It's a nice shot. It's been a lot more comfortable, uh, confident with these balls. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Right, he's covered that pocket. Yeah, I think Jack will be uh, trying to look for the best safety he can. It's a difficult one when the black's in the pocket like that. But he's going to see how he goes about his work. Ooh. He didn't want to be on the cushion. Sort of hard lines here. It's a difficult one because it's, it's a hard safety. The only safety he's got is to leave the white on the bottom rail behind the two reds. But <coughs> yeah, he's not got much margin for error on that red by the black. Well, he's certainly going for it. This is the way Jack plays. He doesn't want to find a safety. He wants to find the clearance. And go for it, full-blooded. He's, uh, he's got a load, a load of arm into that one. I think he'll try and double this red. Yeah, if he doubles this red. Oh. Unlucky, and that's going to be 4-3. It's now was a good display of force. An intention by Jack there. That double had gone in. He was in prize position, prime position to pop that last red.
heating up a little bit now in the club. A few more people. Some music is now flowing. And uh, the brakes are going pretty well. Yeah, ball's potted. Yeah, we've got a red down. A meal. Skills did that. There's still an open table. Looks like he wants the yellows and he takes them. Difficult shot now. Yeah, he's played that. Okay. I think he wants to be on this uh, one by the Reds first, but... No, he's run out of position, unfortunately. This can be the other side of the attacking game where... Sometimes you can go for it and uh, just not finish up nicely on the last ball. Let's see what you can do with this with yellow. Oof, I'll tell you what, that was a monumental effort. And he's not really left a, a decent shot here for now. I wouldn't have liked this black afterwards, though. No. No, be thankful he didn't pot the yellow, I think, in the end. Shot there from uh, O'Neill. <laughs> no shot. Nope, still not. Well, I guess he could cannon off the outer of these three reds into the, the one just nearest to the pocket and put that one down if he wants. Where's the cue ball? Oh, close. Well, Jack will probably take this shot. He's got the right angle to hold for the black. And the debate rages on in the chat. Whether you need a B game or not, if you've got an A game, that's as good as Jack's. Kind of nice pots there from Jack. As he makes it 4-4. No, I see what both, both guys are saying there. You, it is nice to have a B game to fall back onto. However, you, you get sort of stuck into your your game your attacking game um, I've learned over the years to try and slow down a little bit I used to just go for everything 
Uh, not finished nicely on my last ball and then all of a sudden I'll never see that ball again so it's it can obviously be detrimental but it's yeah. the way Jack likes to play he's a young lad he's aggressive he's confident he's I was going to say it speaks to his confidence doesn't it yeah and he, he and the problem is is that sometimes if you do play that B game too much you can get bogged down in it and when it's time to go for the clearance you're kind of scratching your head forgetting what you're doing because you've been so busy covering pockets and laying snookers that you forget how to pot the balls so you need to have a nice happy medium I think well we've got an open table here dry break and first in a few frames yellow just rattled out of that top right pocket now we're approaching the uh, quarter way through the match mark we're locked in at 4-4. Both players are starting to flow a little bit better into the queue. Jack still trying to pop them off the lampshades. It's pretty nice. He just needs to dink out of this one. That red goes into the opposing corner. Taking an extra few seconds on this shot. He knows it's important. This is probably the key ball. Yeah, nice shot. Nice and controlled. Got a lovely little angle to just nudge the black over a little bit. He's uh, He did the Grandad Classic there and just took his eye off the pot. Somebody's put prints on. Bit of purple rain. With <laughs> a slow one. <laughs> Jesus. Kev Butler sneaked in with his B game there and put on a bit of purple rain. <laughs> this frame will now take an hour. <laughs> <laughs> No, I agree with you, Kev. You've got an all-round game, then you are very, very tough to beat. You look at the players like Neil Wren and Dan Wells, etc. He's got that, that game. Even Green has got a bit of the old fudge game. I guess it's probably one oh, of the... Oh, it's a cue ball. Oh, it's it's in down. the pocket. I guess the B game is one of the last aspects of your game to be developed, isn't it? When you're younger, you're more confident you want to get the balls down and get the cue ball around the table and then you'll eventually find that you start coming unstuck as you get further into your career and it becomes more necessary yeah sorry Frankie I, I didn't actually see the shot I, I noticed he, he hit it pretty pretty sternly so I just thought he was concentrating on moving the black so apologies there commentator not paying attention cheers out of the sheen Okay. All right, Frank and Simon, I know you're both better than me. God. Stop it. I do love to let you know. <laughs> They're just letting you know that you're wrong. <laughs> both those chaps are, of course, welcome to come and uh, grace us on the microphone. If and when they're ready. We've got a few money matches coming up in the future. And a <laughs> solid clear up there by Jack. Making it 5-4. Paul Pullen's turned up. He's obviously come to play Jack in his quarter final. Oh wait, no, he's already uh, give that away. He capitulated that one without a fight, unfortunately. And the challenge 25.
clearly the moon moon's aligned, Simon, the last three times we played you, mate, but You got eclipsed. I'm not <laughs> I'm not consistent enough to beat the machine that you are. <laughs> it's like a pool machine, Simon Flaxman. <laughs> Oh, it's a fantastic break there. Look at this. Oh. But what's he got a shot on? He'd want to be yellows. That is for, for mm. an absolute sure bet. Because quite a few of them reds are tied up. Yeah. Just finding the initial yellow. He's got one that goes into the middle here, past that red on the left rail. Jack's just throwing, throwing a drink on the floor. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's a triple vodka, mate. <laughs> Standard breakfast of a Saturday morning <laughs> champion. Yeah. Greg's bacon roll and a triple vodka. That yellow, this yellow that we're right behind here, right behind the cue ball, goes into that middle. That's, that's the shot I'd be looking at first, I think. There he goes. Yeah, nice shot. That's the one. <coughs> yeah, so um, there's a response to Dan Hemphill. There's a Challenge 25 going on. Uh, gold, silver and bronze cup stage. And out of the uh, gold and silver cup quarterfinals, four of the eight matches were uh, forfeited by four of the opponents which is a bit unfortunate really yeah it's a shame really it's a, it's a challenge competition and the, the I think the idea of it was to to play some people that were ultimately better than you and, and it only improves your game you know playing people that are better than you yeah, it does does bring your game up so to have those quarterfinals forfeited was a shame but it's up to the players um you know, they obviously don't like money, so yeah, it's uh, it's fine. Yeah, the afternoon game is Flaxman versus Josh Barnes for a four hundred pound pot mark. That's in a race to seventeen. Oh, that's a good little shot there. Look at that. Playing the seventeen, are they? Yeah. Okay. Don't think I've ever seen that Josh play. Have you ever seen him play on the stream before, Lee, or? No, nope, I club. added him as a new player just for this money match. So that'll be his first appearance on Rocket Rackers TV. I think it's a bit of both now. And people not being able to go for work reasons. Um, I don't think James could make it down here um, from, from Pompey and stuff. Um, it's just just one of them things so, um, I think one of the matches they missed the deadline so oh. it's unlucky there he just he wanted to nudge that yellow into the red pot the red is the red out of the pocket enough for him to Yellow to knock it out, it is. Oh. And he's oh, cleared the other one. And Neil's got a red tucked up behind the black now. Yeah, he might go for the safety here, just to nudge it off the cushion, but back behind the red. Perfect him on, though. He's been very consistent with those, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he just knows he, knows he needs to slow Jack down. He knows Jack wants to go for all the pots, and if he can just get a couple of snookers and get the two then he's, he's right in the match still and as you can see from the scoreline that is the case however his reds are still not very nice so we started the stream off with 18 viewers we now have 32 thanks for joining in people obviously get a little bit more excited as we uh start crossing the threshold towards the finishing line yeah this is a long match race to 21 potentially 41 frames people have got things to do on saturday i guess they'll be popping in and out watching it 
They're going to love me at the bar in a minute because I'm going to order a drink off the app. And you absolutely hate it when I do that. <laughs> so I plan on doing it more. Because I'm just difficult like that. Kevin Dan has decided to just have a private conversation on the stream. Having a natter. Just having a general chin. How's the uh, Challenge 21 going, Dan? I noticed I've seen the stream the other day when you played... Who did you play? Uh, he plays for the yacht. Matt Moorsdale, that's yeah. it. I think you won 11-7. Pretty solid performance. Yeah, he went two frames behind and then had five frames on the bounce. So he got himself ahead in that match. And then Matthew Moorsdale brought it back to six all. And then um, Dan was able to get back into the lead and maintain it to the I, finish. I think that's why you, you resort back to the chat earlier when Kev's talking about a B game. I, I find Matt, is, you know, he's got some great pots in his arsenal, but I just think his, his, his B game needs a bit of work. Um, we've all got areas of our own games at pool that we need to work on mine is pretty much everything um, from even unpacking the queue um, I unpacked it the other day and it just fell on the floor and then he smashed <laughs> it and he cost me 400 quid so that was handy and lack of focus there yeah that, that was a good shot there by Neil to get the uh, red and the black separated not as good as Witcher though when he brought his own balls in and somebody told him to move tables and he got a bit annoyed about it and he lifted his box of balls up off the table Realised they weren't clipped in and they went all around the pool hall. Oh, that wow. That was fun. <laughs> Chasing 15 balls around Rocket Ronnie's. Yeah. He's kept in this frame, Neil, by playing these little safety shots when he needs to. And now it's pretty much anyone's frame. Jack looking for a just cue a... Ball. He's safety there, but he's he's put the yellow onto the rail, which is not ideal. Yeah, he didn't want to put the yellow on the Kirsch. The aggressive player might be looking at doubling this, I guess. As it is on the cushion. Yeah, he's got the double, or, or he could just do the, the, the fudge out and try and push the yellow in between the white and red. Um, and then not really leave him a shot. And obviously, he's got a safety down to the bottom rail, but if that yellow's frozen to the cushion, it's a, it's a difficult double. What do you think? Top, top right pocket. Oh, no, he's yeah, just... He's for the, oh, he's missed it. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. No, I know what you mean, Kev. I, don't, I know you're not just meaning tuck up. You, you mean about having to slow, slow the game down when you need to, when the clearance isn't there. Um, playing the safety shot to give you more an advantage of in the frame. Um, trust me, I do know what you're saying. Rather than just go for everything, slap, dash and happy. Slow it down to your advantage so that you get the frame back in your control. However, like we said earlier, when you're younger and you're a bit aggressive and you, you know, you want to play off some sexy pots and skill shots, then that's the game he wants to play. So if that's what he's best at right now, then we'll leave him to do that. You've got to lean into your talent sometimes, haven't you? Make the most of what you got. But Neil is uh, looking good in this frame now. Yeah, and it's just it's just one frame each every time. And it's five five. And yeah, the match coming up right after this one is Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes in a race to seventeen for four hundred pounds. So, if you want to see Flax and Barnes thrash it out on the match table, then stay tuned for that one. I don't think um, Josh quite realises that it's approaching the end of March and we all know what that means. It's tax season. Time to play your taxes to the Flaxman. <laughs> oh, 
That's Neil Baker breaking frame 11. I think he's got a red down. Yeah, I know. I appreciate what you're saying, Kev. If we all played the same, it would be we, we'd all know what shots were coming and this, that and the other. So that's what makes Paul exciting, especially black ball rules. I think you're going to see that in contrast in flavours later when Ryan faces off against Danny. Um, Danny, I would, uh, he normally goes for the B game, the safety, the, the tuck up, and goes for it when they're absolutely 100% there. Whereas Ryan would be more attacking and, and want to take certain shots on and play a couple of skillies and you know the, this that, and the other. So it's contrasting styles and ultimately it's who plays the best of their styles on that day. So that's, that's just the way the way it goes. I think at the moment. At least we're playing black ball rules though and not world rules because I, I found that those rules sometimes did bog you down. Deliberate fouls and stuff. I mean, what's all that about? I mean, <laughs> just pot the balls or don't pot the balls. Just, let's not mess around with these deliberate fouls. <laughs> anyway, there's a Guinness at the bar with my name on, so I shall be back shortly. <coughs> Well, we could skill it in on this shot, which he's done. That's an excellent shot there. Is Has he got a shot? Oh, wow. The position's let him down a little bit, but he might have a double with this red in the middle of the cushion.
some amber refreshment. I'd seen that last positional shot on the black there, and I have to say, it was a pretty good. He did put his hand up, though, so I'm not sure that's the way, the way he was going. Well, that's the thing with an aggressive game. Sometimes you make your luck. You make opportunities by being positive. And that was a, a dry break there. Yeah, and if, if Jack's on his potting game, Neil knows he can't have too many dry breaks because he's either not going to come back to the table or he's going to come back to the table and have a horrible set. Damn those customers demanding your service and attention. How dare they? Don't forget you can just uh, tap the left hand side of the video a few times and it will rewind it on YouTube. Got a funny feeling Liverpool win the uh, Premier League this, this year. Can't see Chelsea having an easy time of it in the next few years. No. Yeah. It's funny though how his money is not good, but yeah, uh, Saudi uh, money the Saudi is money's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about their human atrocities in their country. Executing. He's not. He's not people. allocated to Putin, is he? So no. But anyway, yeah, it's not. It's not a platform for politics. We no. won't go there. We don't want to get sanctioned. No. Definitely not by Russia. <laughs> They might yeah. not let us in. Well, we're taking in Ukrainians, but would we take in Syrians? I don't think so, do you? Mm. Oh, Ooh. he's missed it. He wanted the finest of cuts. Choice chops. <laughs> Dan knows more about carpets and football. <laughs> I think if he's selling carpets, you would hope that was the case. Dan quoted me for a carpet once, and um, he nearly fell out of his Lamborghini, I think. I think it was about 600 quid for three square foot. <laughs> so what's it got in it? Gold thread? a thick pile rough shag yeah sorry Dan that's right we've all got to make a living mate I tried laying a carpet once it was the worst couple of hours of my life I vowed never to go near it ever again it's definitely a skill and a talent doing that yeah I end up cutting it too short and horrible lines and yeah, it was just a waste of several hundred pound and several hours of my life. That yeah. shot there, Frankie, was not a pop out. He actually just missed that one. Yeah, it just rattled in the knuckles, didn't it? Didn't find a clear path into the pocket. But he's got lucky and he's he's in a way, I mean, it's not very potable on his, on his return, but it does cover that yellow. Nice little recovery. Cool, and he's put that red right in the open as well. 
But anyway, these yellows are pretty dot to dot now. Just need to take them out in an order that he's comfortable with. Starting with the one in the middle. So he wants to maintain an edge in this match now. If he pops all these, he'll be 7-6 up. Better to be ahead than behind. Yeah, nobody's really took the ball by the horns yet, have they? And sort of uh, managed to open up a 2 free frame advantage, which in these long races is kind of what you're looking for. I have to say at the moment that uh, putting these two players together was... Uh, a pretty even match. Mm. Nobody likes a lopsided affair. Gary Sefton. Only joking, Gary. <laughs> Don't you'll upset him. <laughs> hey, he's gone well. Gone about his business quite well here. Beautiful, and that's uh, going to be 7-6. Yep, never in doubt, coming down onto the black there. Yeah, Jack will be pretty annoyed with that red that he missed into the top corner. He, he, he just needed to play it true to get himself a good position on the black. It was a hard positional shot, don't get me wrong. He just... Didn't didn't want to miss that ball. Yeah. If I leave the uh, controls to Mr. Jones, I'm going to go and refresh myself and see if I can get some of those scores from around the hall. And he's left me hand solo on the old console here. And I'm not going to lie, it's like a technological nightmare around here. If I come on board the Starship Enterprise, this thing's buzzing and beeping. It's not ideal. Just checking the graphics there. Neil's at the table and he's on the uh, strawberries. Starting to reach a key area of the match here. Further the way through and uh, trying to maintain a bit of a dominance here. Reds do all go if he takes them out in the right order. He needs a nice shot here. That plant is not 100% set being on the rail there. That's, That's there. That's a good shot. go one or two ways here take the one to the bottom first or the one to the middle first depends on whatever way you want to leave that last red just looking at it now
pretty good. Check side off the uh, Kirsch and then he's on the bleak. And that is uh, eight six nil. Frame 15, nil to break. And the ball's potted. Okay, so for the first time in the match, we've opened up a two frame advantage. Let's see if we can capitalise on it, or let's see if Jack can stay with him. So I've gone and got some scores there. We've got Mark Montague, oh, Daniel Bed beating Matt. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'll get my bearings in a minute. Martin Smith and Lee Knapp are 5 5 apiece. Of course, uh, Neil Baker's got two frames on Jack now at 8 6. Luke Cross is behind against Johan, 4 7. Connor Davison's beaten Matthew Richardson, 8 3. Ben, ben Lindsay's beaten. Rich Chalk 9-2. And Mark Montague is beating Gary Sefton 7-5. Yep, and Matt Lambert's ahead by one frame against Daniel Baird. 9-2, Ben Lindsay. Where does he get these money games from? Uh, he's played Rich Chalk as well before on the stream a few, yeah. fair few weeks ago. So I think that was a bit of a uh, grudge match there. I think Rich beat Ben in that one. I'll have oh, to double check. Well, Ben's turned up today then if it's 9 2. Yeah, he loves his money matches, old Ben Lindsay. He played Luke Cross and beat him 17 10. He played Martin Brown and lost 16 17. He beat Rich Chalk 15-14 on their last outing. And he beat Rio Smith 15-12. He had a free frame lead in that match as well. Mm. Somewhat controversial in the end, I guess, given that he won by free frames. Yeah. And we do have coming up on the, uh, on the 3rd of April, we've got Ben Lindsay versus Matthew Harrison. And on the ninth, for two thousand pound, we got Scott Bessie versus Tinks Singh Potterwall. That should be a good match. Okay then, Jack needs to try and put the brakes on this train and uh, take a foothold in this one. Well, he's got a simple snooker there, but it's not going to be difficult for Neil to get out of that one. Yeah, he can come off the side rail there and just um, 
Push the yellow. Thank you, Pompey, the trader man. We aim to please with a high quality stream here. Thank you for sharing it. Oh, that's a hell of a ball, unlucky. At least he's left himself in a good position for his return, should he get one. Elite 8 Ball TV, I haven't heard of that one. I'll have a little Google of that. This red, to be honest, but good shot. That is a good shot. Yeah, well, I have now. Thank you, Pompey. <laughs> I've just uh, found your share on the page. Thank you very much for that. That's a great shot by Jack there. He just wants to take this one out nice and breezy. Leave the black to uh, middle bag. Oh, he's gone. Gone round the back. What a oh, corner. Look at this. He likes to play him with a little bit more conviction, R Jack, doesn't he? Doesn't like mm. to just softly put anything in. That's a nice response. Keeps himself in touch and distance. Eight, seven. A little bit of uh, promotion for Elite 8 Ball TV there. And they've got 12,000 people nearly. Well, over 11,000 people that like them already. But they've just shared a humble little stream on their page. So thank you very much for that. Now we're frame 16. Jack Coop to break. Oh, and the cue ball's gone down. As did two reds. But it doesn't look easy with the spread around the middle of the table here. We've got some yellows blocking some reds. Not sure if uh, anybody listening knows Matt Richardson. I don't know him personally, so I think someone else might have to shed some light on him. Mm. 
Neil Baker's working through these yellows very comfortably. Yeah, it just needs a reasonable bounce here. Finishing the black in the same bag. And that looks pretty good to me. Well, I think Jack has got himself a worthy challenge here, isn't he? With that reverse dish. Yeah, 9 7 and nil opens up the two frame advantage again. Jack wants to close that down. Just another little peek at the scores. Sorry, I need to refresh that page. We should make that refresh automatically in the future. There you go. We don't get much of it. a look at it, though, because Neil's ready to break again for frame 17. That's dry. Well, let's have a nice little response here from Mr. Coop. He's got a great spread here. I guess he can take either colour, but reds look quite favourable. Yep, yeah, I think reds would be my uh, colour of choice. And these should be a formality, if I'm honest with you. The way Jack cues them up. He dreams of balls like this in his sleep. Not just hairy ones. Keep it clean, keep it he clean. He wants balls in the bags. Balls <laughs> in the bags. Innuendo and double entendre is fine. Nothing explicit. There are little ones watching. Fortunately, they probably won't understand what we're talking about. <laughs> What's he saying, Daddy? Never you mind. <laughs> You'll find out when you're older, son. It's okay. Just needs to do a uh, little, little soft shot here. Yeah, perfect. Now we're playing pool. Yeah, that was uh, that was like training day. <coughs> Although Jack does not look like Denzel Washington. <laughs> <laughs> he probably couldn't get any further away from looking like Denzel Washington, to be fair, than Jack Coop. It's the ears. Yeah, it's, that's probably <laughs> the big giveaway. <laughs> Never mind the skin colour. Yeah, so he keeps it one frame in. And he's had two dishes of his own now. Yeah, and it's game on. Quick turnaround. Balls flying in. I think Neil's just run away for a refreshment. Yeah, certainly game on. 9 8. All to play for. Yeah, because I haven't updated these scores since I got back, but just to run over them again Mark Montague was beating Gary Sefton 7 5. Johan was beating Luke Cross 7-4. Davison was beating Richardson 8-3. Ben Lindsay was beating Rich Chalk 9-2. Daniel Baird. There's only a frame in it between him and Matt Lambert at 4-3. And Martin Smith and Lee Knapp were drawing five apiece. Last time I had a look there. I shall sure run around the hall again in another 15, 20 minutes or so. And update them for you. And just have another look at our next match coming up today is for the afternoon session. We've got Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes in a race to 17 for 400 pound. I wonder how well this shows. Oh, it's not great. I'll go through that in a bit. We can run down our afternoon session matches. We've got Connor Davison breaking frame 18. Oh, and the cue ball's gone down. 
And look at this spread. All the balls are up the top end of the table. Yeah, and that's the thing. He's Neil's opened up a two-frame advantage twice, and Jack's come back at him twice. But losing the cue ball there and leaving those yellows like that, uh, you just can't see anything other than the two-frame gap opening again. But it's a shame. Jack won't be happy with that. However, that's what happens. And it is a race of 21, so we're not even halfway into this match yet. There's going to be plenty of opportunity. Oh, did I say Connor Davison was breaking? I meant Jack Coop. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not sure who, who Connor's playing. I've never heard of his name before. No, he's an unknown around these parts. However, I am surprised that Martin Smith's not been involved in saying that he shouldn't be playing him and he should start. And He's too good. Someone should play at two in the morning and on the moon, etc. But, yeah, I don't know. It's It could be. Connor's a very solid player, so... These players agree to it. It's their own money they're putting up. I don't think we've had Connor versus Jack. That'd probably be a good match, wouldn't it? They're both aggressive players. Yeah, it would would be a pretty tasty affair. Let's be mm. honest. Especially if they're both flowing. Yeah. It wouldn't take very long. No, two young men, very attacking. Very much have an A game. Yeah, you'll have to excuse my co-commentator today. Apparently, we've got a Rich playing and Connor Davison just broke in this match. So, we, we will get there. We <laughs> will get there. As long as he's not saying Jimmy White or Ronnie O'Sullivan, we're all right. Thing is, I'm only on the second beer. Here's a question for you, eight ball fans out there. Who would win a race to 21 between Alex Higgins and Jimmy White? Uh, who would I still be alive to witness the end I of it? I <laughs> think that game would well, just be amazing. There'd be a lot of drinks and, and cigarettes involved. Probably a little bit of the other. A lot of bit of a staggering around and <laughs> anger thrown at each other. <laughs> Alex, Alex Higgins was permanently angry. <laughs> That's a nice shot. That black is going into the corner. And there's a two frame advantage again. Yep, another reverse dish. Pow. Another sub three minute frame. No hanging about. <laughs> Matt's fine. His Lambo is better spec than mine. Ten eight. Couple of frames away now from the halfway point of this match. Still anybody's game, I feel. Be, in, be interesting to see how Neil would respond if Jack was to pull it level again at this later stage in the match. Well, these breaks haven't quite been going their way in the last few frames, have they? He's given Jack a chance. If they can clear these up and then he's got a break. Yeah, I think he's going to take yellows. <laughs> yes, the football is on, Kev. If it's on BT Sports, it will be on at Ronnie's. Uh, Did he come a little bit? Just a little bit far. Just needs to be careful how he gets on that yellow by the two reds on the right hand side. It's not, not an easy ball to get on. Uh, yeah. So he's he's still got to get on it. Probably going to leave it till last now. Needs to leave a, a good angle to get over to the black though. Oops. Okay, looks a bit straight. 
He should be able to manufacture it. He's going to smash it in off the, t off the bottom rail. Oh, he's going to screw it up. And he's... Yeah. Screwing out of this one past the red. Oh, there's a cue ball. Oh, nice shot, Jack. Nice. Perfect. He's happy with that. That's for sure. That's a result. 10-9. And we're starting to see why these players have been backed with such a large amount of money now. Yeah, and you've got to admire Jack's tenacity. He he just refuses to to give in and let Neil take that extra advantage. Every time Neil's opened up that two-frame gap, he's come straight back at him. Neil Neil hasn't got an easy ride in this match. And Neil's not exactly pulling his punches either. No, it's definitely a, a it's a it's a close game. It's a good match for the neutral. I wouldn't want to be one of these guys' backers for sure. Oh, you might have someone nagging in your ear. Where's that £500 gone? Oh, it's on my boy. Well, and, uh, it, it could go either way. As Kev said earlier, it doesn't seem like Jack's got any bills to play with the way he plays. Maybe he's put all the money up himself. Who knows? He's got the red down. Cue ball stay oh, down. That's a nice break. Uh, do those reds plant in the middle? Yeah, I think they do. If they do... And he's on. He's going to have to take this top red to start mm. proceedings if he wants reds. Yeah, he can He can go yellows as well. Like yellow does pass the black into the bottom corner, so it's not a be or an end or on what colour you want to choose. Plus the red by that yellow here mm. when there is the cue ball is a little bit tricky so he is going to opt to go yellows that yellow by the red does pass up into the uh, top right pocket but it also goes into the middle cool lovely little bit of side there I think the way he's uh, taking these balls out, he's he's really up for it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't phase him that he's a frame behind. He's just going about his business. He needs to draw this cue ball up into those uh, that bunch now. I think. I'm not sure if this year as well. I think he is joining the IPA. And fair play to him. I I always think if you get good at a local level to take it further. There's only so much you can do on the local circuit before you've achieved all you want to achieve and you've got to take it further afield and play the best of the best and so be it. Yeah, the problem is all the local players become afraid of you as well, don't they? And then you run out of opponents just because nobody wants to play you. So without taking it to the next level, you're going to find yourself just stagnating, I think. Yeah, you're right, Kev. Like I said, his tenacity is second to none. He just goes for it, and that's a great shot as well. This black, this black does sneak past into the middle. I believe he's looked at it a couple mm -hmm. of times. He's not, he's not afraid. And uh, that's locked up again at ten ten. <coughs> we take this match to the bookies now. They've just, uh, they just wouldn't get good odds on either of them. So the bookies will be wondering how they make their money. He's a very positive player, and that's the that's the thing we were saying earlier about A and B game. Sometimes when people are flowing and potting well, it, it puts the fear in your opponent because you know that if you miss, it's frame over. So that that's the one way it works in a positive sense. We're halfway through this match now. Neil breaking frame 21. 
Another cluster of two yellows there that plant into the middle. It's the same as the previous frame. Although he didn't need them because he went the opposing colour. I think both players have opened up a little bit now. They want to uh, play the game to its best ability and uh, clear them up if they're on. I have to say with the last seven or eight frames we've had, it could be... Uh on course to be one of the best streams we've had. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Mm, he's just got to develop this. He's got... No, he's going for the plant, I think. Mm. No. So we'll have to take this red up the top of the table, <coughs> but then the rest of these reds do go. Slight result there, I think. The only reasonably tricky ball is a red that's uh, above the black, which he's closest to now. But he can get on that, the amount of reds he's got to play position off. <coughs> just uh, just go for the plant, Jack. I mean, you know, what you got to lose. Thank you for the praise, Cole Bedford. And we do love to put these streams on. And we're very fortunate to oh, have a great look match. at this shot. I'll tell you what. Yeah, he's starting to fire up now. I, I think that black even sneaks past the corner. If it doesn't, it will nick off the cushion, off the yellow, into the bag. He's still got a little bit of work to do, though, because that red's finished higher up the table than he wanted. Yeah, and we are grateful that we uh, we have the players willing to come out on the stream as well, because there's plenty of talent out there, but not all of them want to Ooh. put themselves in front short. of the cameras. Yeah, stream is not for everyone. I mean, we've got some very top players locally that don't want to be on the stream. Um, maybe it's because they feel they've got added pressure on them. Maybe it's because they, they don't want to look back if they play particularly badly and think, Christ, what was I doing there? Um, it's not for everyone. It's a fair play to anyone that wants to play on it. But it is a great service for them as well. If you, if you do want to develop your game, then what better than to have commentators going through every shot you've played and you know tearing your game apart so you can you know look back as a resource 2020 written all over it says Ant Morgan yeah thanks Ant I hope you got your money off Frank uh, I seen your post last night did have a little chuckle and chowed down on some popcorn <laughs> um. I wonder if uh, cash <laughs> up front is the best way yeah. to to arrange these matches you know cash on the table otherwise uh you do leave yourself vulnerable, I guess, to people reneging on the deal. Nah, fair play. I mean, I, we've all been there before in these little little pool matches locally and stuff. It it might only it might only be twenty quid, but as I think Ant was saying there, it's the principle of the thing. And mm -hmm. you make a bet, you lose a bet, you pay up. That's a simple fact of the matter. Um, so yeah, it's it's just one of them things. Um, so I hope that all gets ironed out for you, Ant. And thanks for tuning in. Please keep uh, bringing on your um, trick shots. Stop putting Frankie Jakeway on the pool table, though. Only joking, Frank. We love you, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neil just uh, reverting back to a snooker there. He knows that Jack is in flying form. Yes. I ain't seen a snooker for a few frames. Yeah.
Yeah, Jack's got that fire about him at the moment. Just the way he's approaching the table and the balls, he he just seems to want to go for it all. He's just got a bit unlucky with the the previous clearance by the red going too high on the table. It, it, if it didn't go that high, I think he'd had a, he would have had a better chance of taking him out. Neil's just keeping it tight here, look. And he has been very consistent with these snookers. I think he's got every single one he's gone for so far. Yeah, sure, Pete. Um, we do see your streams, SRPL. Um, you know, they are they are some of the streams that you put on are a bit 1990s-esque, but we've all got to start somewhere. Um, I'm sure we would be able to, to help out in, in some capacity. Perhaps if the pub where they're streaming the final, the semis from, etc., want to throw a few beers our way, then I'm sure Lee would be open to a, a talk. He's very good with the technology, as you can see, so please get in touch via Facebook. Oh, a little bit of a lax shot there by Neil. That was, a, that, was a, that was the loosest shot I've seen today, that one. Mm. Yeah, and I found when I was um, exploring putting all this together that the right hardware was oh. essential. Oh, Jack, 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 Jack. He, if he's got away with that, he's very lucky. I'm going to have a computer with a good enough graphic. Oh, no, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I think he potted that black out of more frustration on the fact that he didn't finish on it very well. Yeah. Because he should never have been there. He just put so much extra oomph into that red. Yeah, just going back to what I was saying about putting these streams together, hardware was essential. Um, I had to buy... Like, I tried with laptops, no good at all. I had to go get a, PC, a gaming PC. Uh, when it came to the cameras talking to the computer I had to buy a, a proper Wi-Fi router up for streaming 24 frames a second at 1080p um, yeah you just the, for the, the top quality it really demands high spec hardware so that was the first um, first roadblock I had to overcome and yet yeah, we do it on OBS I uh, wrote the website to produce OBS scripts. So I just go on the website, set it up on Rocket Rackers TV, and then I'll download the save file, and then just run. There's a little bit more involved in that. Well, I'm a web developer and I uh, over-engineer things, but it's, uh, it's brought you what we have today. And Jack's got a great break here, but I don't think he'd be, he's got three reds down. But he's not on one. And these yellows are a little bit hampered down at the bottom of this table. And of course, um, I have built Eight Ball Arena to run channels on as well. So. <coughs> If you want to run your own channel like the SRPL, then that can be set up in 8-Ball Arena. Just like Rocket Rackers TV is a channel on 8-Ball Arena, other channels can be created. You have to uh, have a little bit of training to figure out how the whole thing works, but I'll be definitely happy to entertain conversation on how we could set up the second channel on 8-Ball Arena. Oh, now you've started them off. Yeah. <laughs> I shall leave it there. We'll get back to the pool, <laughs> shall we? And Jack's got himself on these yellows. Yeah, going back to the SRPLP, as long as the um, venue that you play the semis or the finals on, etc., have got a good internet connection, um, then obviously we should be able to uh, bring it to you live. Please ensure the venue that you choose have has got that facility and preferably a little bit of room around the table. I know some of the pubs um, don't leave much to be desired about getting around the table. We do need to be set up with a PC and a table um, at a reasonable distance so to not hinder the players. So good internet connection and good space and we are hot to trot. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we're happy to bring this show on the road under our 8 Ball Arena brand. It hasn't had any matches on it yet, but um, Rocket Rackers TV is mainly for Rocket Ronnies in Southampton. But we can run live pool streams from anywhere under the 8 Ball Arena brand. And then if you want to create your own brand, then we can create your own Rocket Rackers TV. So something to think about. Get in touch when you're ready. Yeah, I would only ever do the stream um, wired. Just pop what you want, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice one, Pete. We have been seeing some of the games. We've seen um, we've seen the Firehouse game the other night. Obviously, Parky playing on there. Um, got some very good quality players around Southampton. I know we've got a big singles final coming up soon between Kevin Butler and Gary Wolfie Pennington, which looks like a very tasty affair. Kev beat me in the quarter 6-5. I thought I stuck with him quite well, to be fair, but he just nicked that last frame and it just uh, the, the B game kicked in, I think. And Simon Flaxman, don't forget the doubles final. Uh, the dream team of, of the Flaxman and Reg um, versus, I think, is it a couple of guys from the Swan, I want to say? Um, which, again, should be a, a high-quality match. And Jack got a little bit lucky with the uh, bounce onto the uh, final yellow, but he obviously couldn't He run out of position there with that cut. He left him with a tough black... I think the shot here for Neil is to I would be nudging the, the far left hand red on the bottom rail just leaving the white right up close to the next red yeah it's the ultimate safety but he might go a different way uh, he's going to try it now I think so he's going to develop and snooker at the same time which is a percentage all shot not sure percentage all is a word in the Oxford dictionary coined today yep you heard it for the first time live on Rocket Rackers TV. New words. You're welcome. Well, there's definitely not a shot for Jack. You could easily make contact. Yeah, good shot. He's kept the cue ball out. Put the black safe though. No, he doesn't give away two shots, so that's the main thing. And now still got this uh, red on the cushion. Yeah, and he's not he's not got a relatively easy safety. He knows the black safe as it is. However, it's difficult to get the cue ball in a snookerable position. Okay, so he's left Jack. Uh, oh, it's, it's almost a straight double. A few inches higher it would have been, but yeah, he'll be running the risk of the cue ball getting in the way. I think. I think. I think Jack knows he's got to go for it because now that Neil's put that red over the corner, they should be dollies if he misses it. No, unlucky. He's put it safe again. I guess that's a potential saving grace if uh, Neil runs out of position on these. He's not gone mm. for it. And he's no. left his red in the middle of the cushion. What do you play here? Exhibition match, you play the jaw shot. And try and pot it that way. But when you play it for £8,600, you... Kind of, yeah, it's not too bad, really, sir. To be fair, yeah, nice shot. So he's going to have a pressure shot on that last red. 
and I don't think you can get overly close to it. This is a big ball. It's nice and straight on it. It's straight, but there's a big distance between the cue ball and the red. Mm. And he's fluked it. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> As a turning point in the match, you'll look back at that shot and you'll go, ooh. There's always a chance it can happen, though. That's what I said about the pressure ball. That was, it, it was straight. However, when you're playing for that, this sort of money, at that sort of time, that's a tricky pot. He's shaking his head. We all shake our head in that situation. However, we are also all thankful that it found a way into the pocket. So, six and two frees. Equals four. Quick math. Weak source. No <laughs> catch up. And we are locked in at 11 11. Yeah, this match is going nowhere. So now we are down to a best of 19. Oh, that cue ball. Teasing in the corner. Don't think Jack that, that'll phase Jack. He's probably assuming he knows he should be 12-10 up. However, locked up, all to play for. No, we're just streaming on um, on YouTube, Pumpy. We're uh, Pumpy. <laughs> Pumpy. Pumpy. Uh, yeah. It was an earthquake there, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it was a volcano, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Ash cloud. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Facebook, um, it's just, it's just not a video platform and, you know, we want, we want the videos, the, sh the, sh the streams, the product ultimately to be, um, the most accessible, um, and enjoyable and you can cast a YouTube video, um, and you can, you know, you can just do a lot more on YouTube, uh, to build your <coughs> channel. I think, I think Facebook's good for communication, but YouTube's really where, I found um, the videos should live. I mean, I've tried to watch videos on Facebook before and just got frustrated with it. So, yeah, I, c I couldn't be bothered with the hassle of that. And Jack's going to take some yellow. Oh, nope. That was a bit unexpected. Yeah, I do see with the, the videos on YouTube, they, they do get a lot of interaction. But I think uh, Facebook naturally encourages you to just... Oh, cheers, dude. I'm, just, I'm stacking them up now. Uh, but Facebook does encourage you to just scroll away and, and carry on. And also you get a lot of trolls on Facebook as well. So I thought, yeah, it's uh, it's a much wider audience perhaps, but not necessarily the best audience Samuel's taking the reds yeah but you got to be careful with Facebook as well though because you can have music on in the background and then they can mute your whole stream because you haven't got the music rights to the Spice Girls or something and you're like well who wants the music rights to that you know so they, they can put a lot of rules and regs in. Yeah, You've I've been zuckerberg I, I have had a couple of uh, content issues with background music on YouTube, but I think they have a um, they have a better system in place dealing with all the um, the rights owners of that music and just like the content ID system. It's a bit of a pain, but I, th I think it's slightly better. So yeah, you just got to make make a decision as to what platform you think is best for for what you want out of it and I like building up a YouTube channel I want that um, I want that silver play button plaque on the back of the wall I 
Yeah, on well, Facebook also took down my original um, Rocket Rackers TV page with no warning, and I never got that back, and I had to rebuild that from scratch. I had over 50 likes within a few months. It was going quite well. And then um, Facebook said, oh, you can't have the page anymore because there's a content violation, and they never told me what it was. And um, they just refused to get back to me in any meaningful way. And if I had all my videos on Facebook, then they would have all been gone. And that would have been it. The first few months of operation would have just been... Just, would have just vanished. So, yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, it was very ouch. I was, I was quite annoyed. And, you know, I, I had to start a group and then start another page and been... I think I've got up to like 60 or 70 likes on the Facebook page now, so it's it's, it's going slow, but yeah, there's, there's very little recourse with Facebook, and I just I, I don't like their attitude very much, so I think it's better to separate the operations, Facebook for promotion and for community engagement, and then YouTube for the actual video platform. It seems to work quite well for my needs anyway. That's my justifications. But enough of that. We're here at 11.11. Neil Baker's on these reds. There's a bit of work to do. Yeah, it's good to chat. It's good to try and uh, work through these things and discuss the positives and negatives of each platform. And I do get jealous sometimes of the, the numbers I see on Facebook. I think, oh, I could, could get higher numbers on Facebook if I went that route. But I wouldn't be able to cast the video to Matelli. So Jack Coop returns to the table now. These yellows don't look too bad. He can work his way around them. He's just ensured that that one potentially problematic yellow is, is definitely potable now in a few pockets. And he's got two down. Two for the price of one. What shot there, I think. Uh, missing that uh, yellow. <coughs> oh, I've just been corrected there. You can cast Facebook to TV. some jitters working into these two players games now They're halfway through this match and they can't separate themselves and yeah he's not happy with that ball oh, oh dear as he comes so far that you can actually see that Nope. 
And frame 23 seems to be a bit problematic for both players. Now we're scrapping it over the line. After this one, I'll go and get some more schools from around the hall. Uh, there's a few nerves kicking in now because that shot, that last shot, was a bit loose, and this is exactly the outcome of that. I'm not sure what he wants to play now. Gonna drop down to a safety game. It's a pretty good shot. Might be able to see the edge of this yellow, I'm not sure. Righty-ho then, Jackie boy. One good pot. And the frame is yours. The thing is, it's, it's almost a shot to nothing because as long as he puts a little bit of screw onto this yellow, I don't think the red goes past the black into that corner. So if he leaves a what on that side of the cushion. Oh, well, now that's changed things a bit. You can put the red in the middle now. Yeah, this this has been a very tentative frame mm. for both players. It's not a gimme. It's not a gimme, and it's there. Oh, and Kevin uh, Neil has gone into the lead, twelve eleven. And I shall leave the buttons with Mr. Jones again. I'm going to go and have a walk around the hall. Uh, it just looks like uh, they've gone for a little uh, toilet break here. We'll be back in a few moments for the action. And the conclusion of this race of 21, 8,600 pound money match between Neil Baker and Jack Coop.
So I've just uh, popped around the hall and got the latest results in so far. Mark Montague is ahead 10-8 against Gary Sefton. Joe Ham is beating Luke Cross 10-7. Connor Davison is ahead against Matthew Richardson 13-7. Ben Lindsay beating Rich Chalk 14-5. Daniel Baird is losing against Matt Lambert. Four frames to eight. And a close affair between Martin Smith and Lee Knapp there. Martin Smith edging it currently. 10-9. think both players have just taken a moment to gather some composure. Jack is racking up. Jack Coop to break. Frame 24. And well, he's got a red down. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. And Jack's taking the yellows. That's a good opportunity to flick this yellow out. And he's taken it. He's done well there.
Looks pretty good. And he doubles it in for a bit of flair and makes it 12-12 with a break dish. That's one way to come back from the intermission there by Jack Coop. Yeah, he just sub sub subscribed to Dishney Plus. He wants Moana of that. Oh. <coughs> He's certainly not let himself become frozen. He's on the up. He's left Neil to Pixar those out of the pockets. <laughs> Tell you what, they just keep coming. Well, frame 25, Neil Baker to break. Oh, and he's got the cue ball down. Where's the cue ball going? He's got two yellows down. Plantable reds at the top. If it was me, I would probably just take the red off the side rail first and then clear them up. Actually, if it was me, I would bring the red off the side cushion and then miss the next shot and Neil would win the frame. Yeah, if it was me, I'd have lost 21 nil by now, <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it would have been a mismatch. Mm. I'd have been complaining about my shoulders half hour into the match. Anyway, he's doing what I said, bringing the red off the cushion. He doesn't want to put it there, though. Ooh. He's got a little bit of work to do now. So we're locked in at 12 apiece now, race to 21. It is now a best of 17. Cool, put a bit of fizz on that one. Mm. And he's ended up in a place between Salisbury and White Parish, and no man's land. But um, That's a real place, by the way. Look it up on the Google Maps. Yeah, it is. If you ever go there, you'll you'll realise that the only good thing about it is the road out of it. And the joke you get to make having been there. Um, I believe that he thought he was going to do better with those two visits there. Mm. Yeah, he kind of let that one get away from him a bit, didn't he? Didn't make the most of it, especially after that dish Kevin Butler is heading down to the club shortly thanks for the warning we'll roll out the red carpet we've got Kevin Butler he is um, commentating on a money match the one with Tinks Later on in, was it, 9th of April. So that'll be the first time Kevin Butler gets on the mic. It'll be interesting. We've got 47 of you locked in watching the action on this table. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching Rocket Rackers TV. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And find us on Facebook as well. That's where you'll hear about all the action first. And hit the notification bell. To make sure you never miss the action. got this red down by the bottom left hand side of the table to figure out he's decided to go for a snooker 
Yeah, and that's the correct shot there. He, I, I personally, I, would, he, I thought he would have wanted to bring it off with another few more inches, but doesn't make a huge amount of difference. This should hit a yellow. Yeah. Probably just be trying to go for the thin cut on the red into the middle of the table at the bulk line and leaving the white over where he had it before. Would be the shot. Or you can go your own way. You can go your own way. I don't, I don't, yeah, let's see. That. I just think the easier shot there would have been the red and the bulk, but it's just looking at a couple of shots. Just wanted to leave the drift of white over by where the red is on the right hand rail at the top, and he wouldn't have had much of a shot. Well, that's a good shot. And I think this could be 13-12. Oh, we spoke too soon. Commentators curse. Yep. Stevie Wonder would be all over that one. Golden Wonder. Is he watching today? Let us know if you are, Stevie. I know you're a fan. He probably is. He is a pool lover. Um... Yes, it's it's tricky because this this plays into Jack's head because he's got a couple of nice pots he could play here, but he knows he's got a tricky red down by the black there on the rail mm. that he needs to develop. So he'll be caught between two stalls here. He knows what the percentages are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he needs to look for the safety. That's pretty good, see? There's that B game that Kev's talking about. Yeah, shot. Oh, he's left it nicely near the pocket there. That's the thing, if you, uh, if you don't have a shot and you're forced to play a, a recovery shot or a safety then you want to develop the ball. You want to leave it in a better place than you found I'll it. I'll tell you what, he's, he's actually got away with that. He's got away with that. Mm. He's given it the big heave ho. And he's not left a lot. Because I've covered that yellow. And this yellow's too far away from the pocket for an easy shot. So, And he's put, put the black safe-ish. Uh -huh. Right. He's got a big pocket for the black now. Plays this. Going to play the double. It's Doubles just don't want to seem to go in for him. And he's just dropping the cue a little bit there as well. Showing that he's becoming a little frustrated. Which, you, it, regardless of whether you feel it or not, if you show it, then you're you're giving something to your opponent there. You're letting them know that they're starting to get under your skin. So it's better for composure if you can keep it inside yourself, I think. As Neil goes 13-12 ahead. Yeah, that's 13-12. So, edging into the final third of this match. I think the double there, the double that he just played, I, this is just me, obviously, I'm a different player, but if he plays that ball softer, if he plays that double softer, he, he's likely going to end up on one of the other two two balls to be on position. But if you play it softer, then it's got slightly more of a chance of going in the pocket. Because he played it at pace, it kind of just swirled around, the, swirled around the pocket and popped out and just mm. didn't really do anything, but... I don't know. It's just it's just one of them food for thought shots. You want to play it confident. You want it to go in with, with authority. Um, but yeah, sometimes if you play balls a little bit slower, they kind of kinder in the pocket. So anyway, we can look at back at that frame at a later date and um, decide from there. 
Another drive break here from Jack in the 26th frame of a possible 41. Ooh. Look at that black precariously over that pocket. One wrong move and you could... Yeah, any more pace on that and that was going in. Mm. Makes me think this frame's going to be uh, won by default looking at that black. Coop takes the yellows. A nice little cut there. And he's got the he's got the big pocket here with the black sat over the middle for this yellow. You could use his yellow just to nudge it, nudge that black out a little bit. Oh, but he's. I think the angle was just a bit too tight there with where that red was. And all these reds are sat up. That should be a formality here for now. why uh, <coughs> Jack was a little bit frustrated after that shot as well because he knew that it was going to be an easy return to the table for Neil and that puts him two frames ahead again after Jack worked quite hard earlier to get himself back level One, one chance is uh, the black's not so straightforward. It's quite close to that cushion. It'll require a very accurate final shot here by Neil. But he's got nice and close to it. Yeah, he just needs one confident pot now with the black up to the top corner. And that should be 14-12. And again, this can come back to the fluke that Neil got with that red a few frames ago, which would have put Jack 12-10, but it made it 11 all. That could be it. That was a turning point, I think. I said before Neil took the shot on, that was a pressure ball, and uh, he got away with it. And that's the little tiny bit of run and luck that you need in these long matches. Mm. We always talk about the good players, talking about run and and position and stuff like that and that's that's one of the moments that you can look back on and go yeah that was an important frame well you got a red down on the break but the spread isn't very favorable there yeah, and jack just needs to hold his cool i think it's not going his way exactly right now but there's still plenty of opportunity in this match so long as he keeps himself in it mentally and it's frame 27, my lucky number on the roulette. Jacob's birthday. It's my birthday too. It is. Yeah. 27th of December. What a shit birthday that is. Um, I remember that <laughs> number as well, because a few years ago I got really, really drunk. Went to a casino with a few mates. Got down to my last 30 quid after doing my brains on the poker table, trying to chase all sorts of weird and wonderful hands. Mm. I had £30 left in my pocket, and I put it all on 27, and it came straight in. And I was like, thank and God for that. And you were able to cover the rent. It got, <laughs> it got me out of a hole, <laughs> put it that way. Because if I went home that night and told the missus how much money I'd lost, 
I wouldn't have had a missus. <laughs> 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 it definitely got me out of the hole. So that is my lucky number. Instead, you just got to say nothing happened. Nothing, <laughs> nothing at all happened, <laughs> apart from I'm here at half four in the morning missing a coat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it's gone. It's on a train somewhere. It's a nice little poke up to the top left corner there. Yeah, they're not they're not the easiest yellows, but he's got roots for them. That's one of them because he can play this. This yellow goes up to the top corner. It's a massive shot. This yeah. is a big shot. He's got to get on something after this. That's missed. That's not good. He's reaching a little bit there. Oh, I, I don't know if he can see the edge of this red by that yellow. If he can, he can nudge it in. Oh, he's just going to take the one over the middle. That's okay. He's got a nice yellow there as well. Putting that a little bit more safer. Jack will definitely be looking to respond now. He knows he doesn't want to go three frames behind. He wants to keep it in touch and distance. He'll take the bottom red now and just leave himself nicely behind th this uh, last red. It's perfect. What will he do? Will he screw down and take the black into the middle? No, nope, he'll just leave the cue ball there. You don't want to put too much pace in the red. And it's a decent shot on the black to dish up and make it 13-14. So that's exactly the response Jack needed there. Give himself a bit more confidence. His head was starting to drop. Yeah, we are reaching the business end now of this uh, money match. So when you start seeing a little bit of Barry turn up, things start going 50p, 20p. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Bank of England putting their interest rates up to 0.75%. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Just a cartel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crash, bang, wallop, and nothing's gone in. Yeah, another dry break. This table is not very forgiving. You want you to work for everything. Yeah, those uh, yellows look pretty tasty as well. <coughs> Not the best positional shot. No, but I guess he can cut the yellow by the black. He won't be happy with that. Nope. There's a very loose shot on the first one. Just left him no position on the next shot, unfortunately. And there's plenty of work to do here with the reds. Not a simple run out. Just about dropped for him there, but I'm not sure he's on a shot. Does this red pass the yellow down into the bottom left corner? I'm not sure it does, but Jack thinks it does. He's just going to play a developmental shot there. Um, I don't know. I think Neil clears up for me, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, they do look clearable. Maybe that was... Uh, a sign of the um, 
undeveloped B game that we discussed earlier in Jack. Oh, he's, oh. Had, a, he's had a pop out. Goalkeeper. That was a pop out, Frankie Jacobway. He didn't just take his eye off the ball. <laughs> Those uh, rubber-backed <coughs> supreme tables that Simon Ayers was talking about last <coughs> week. If you, uh, if they don't like you, then they'll spit the ball back out. Cool, that ball's still spinning. Key shot is the red down the rail, which is the next shot coming up. This is not easy. No, no. Holding the pocket won't really give him any advantage either he needs to put this down mm. might have got away with that a little bit yeah, it does have this uh, bottom bottom right yellow no, I don't oh, is, is the black in the way I don't no, you can see that one in the middle. He's just working out how he's going to take the uh, yellow that's lower to it mm. at a later time. Looks like it might be the last one for him. Mm, that's okay. Flaxma said that pocket is notorious for it. <coughs> it is B.O.G. Not in a good way. Yeah, it's a nice shot, nice angle. I guess no table is the perfect table. Every table has its quirk or two. It's a nice shot. He's on that, lovely. Two frame advantage is restored. We started getting some um, a bit of an audience racking up on the on the sofa there. People finding some interest in this match as it's coming towards its crescendo. We've completed 28 of 41 possible frames. Thirteen to go, perhaps. This is frame twenty-nine. I'm sure these players will give us as much pull as possible. And the red, uh, the white stays out. The yellow goes down. A good spread there. I don't think he's on a yellow. <laughs> if he wanted them. Is he on a red? Maybe the, uh, the, red, the higher red that he's closest to will pass the yellow into the middle. No, that's what he's looking at. And he'll take the reds. Yeah, he's got to be careful because if he misses one, these yellows are nice. Yeah, Jack will be looking to pounce back on these. Yeah, and he's, oh, he's, he's got a shot on that one in the corner, luckily. But he very nearly ran out of position on everything there. He's got a strong cut now into the corner, but it's a big ball because it then leaves all the yellows open. So, and Jack really needs to win this frame. No. He, has, he, has he put that yellow safe by the black? I'm sure Jack will find a way, if he can, to liberate it. Oh, he's looking at it. Yeah, I think it's touching the black, isn't it? And I think the black just takes away the angle. <coughs> Ooh. 
Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's not good. No. He's run out of position there. I'm just going to try a plant here. No, just double. Triple. No. He's not happy now. Yeah. Bit of frustration crept into Jack there. And it's uh, Neil's frame to lose now. Yeah, you couldn't ask for... Well, I mean, the black's a little bit hampering. He's going to have to pick off all these reds before the one above the black. And we could take that red into the middle. Yeah, he's looking at the one in the middle, but it's it's one of them shots where you know if you miss it, it's game over. So do you want to really take that shot now or do you want to just play the one over the hole and try and get yourself better on it? It's, yeah, he's gone percentages-wise. Yeah, this black and yellow do look quite uh, impeding. Uh, it's okay because I think the yellow's given him a big pocket into the middle. There we go. Oh, he didn't even see it. He didn't even go through it. Right, she just needs one good solid pot now into the middle. And uh, it should be another frame to nil. That's a good ball. Just wants a little bit mindful of the middle bag. Yeah, that's uh, a nice shot. And that's 16 13. It's a little bit of daylight there now for Neil. <coughs> And that, for the first time in the match today, is a free frame advantage. And what a time to get it closer to the end of the match. Yeah, Neil Baker only with five frames to victory, as opposed to eight for Jack. Just a little reminder to all you watching, we've got Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes coming up after this from 3 p.m., depending on the finish time of this match, of course, for £400 in a race to 17. So stay tuned. But for now, this is frame 30. Jack Coop to break. And the cue ball's gone down again. This has been a very harsh table. The yellow's gone down. But, of course, with the cue ball going down, Neil has a free shot. <coughs> and some good-looking yellows, really. I think given how the yellows are in the reds way, I might go for the yellows. Oh, maybe that yellow could have bounced a bit more fortuitously there for Neil. We should be able to clear these out. Yeah, the, the balls aren't quite going as well as they were a little bit earlier on for Jack at the moment, especially with the cue ball going in off. He's lost the cue ball a few times off the break today. Oh, that might not be ideal there for Neil. Mm. Looks more difficult than it needed to be. Is he going for a snooker now? Yeah. Did he even touch the yellow there? Oh, I think he did. Yeah. But he didn't come off it and, and hit a cushion. I think he did hit the yellow, didn't he? Yeah, but did he hit a cushion afterwards? Yeah, hit the corner of the pocket, didn't it? Oh, okay. Mm, I don't know. I personally think that was a foul, but... There you go. Yeah, that's a good shot from Jack. That's fine. Yeah, Jack's actually left him snookered there. Jack just needs to dig in a little bit here, find his confidence, take a deep breath. He's dropped his cue a few times. 
I say that just lets your opponent know that they're winning the psychological game and you really don't want to give that information away even if they are you to keep that to yourself Well, there's a chance for Jack now. All these reds are sat up. I'm sure he can find a way around the table to put them all down. So you'll know that these yellows are all very potable. to get above this middle red which he has that's done perfect. so that's a good shot take your time Jack take your time and there's no rush <coughs> well just one more good positional shot onto the black and uh, it should uh, tighten the gap back to two frames Oh, oh dear. So lucky there from Jack. I'm not sure. Well, I think Neil might be better off just kicking one of these yellows in off the top cushion. I think they might all be getting in each other's way. But you could probably come up and down off the top cushion and just nudge one of them in. The thing is, doesn't. Yeah. It, it <laughs> As long as he just leaves the cue ball up on the uh, up high on that rail, I think he covers the angle, the pot and angle for Jack anyway on the red. So mm. he might he might choose to develop them with playing a safety shot at the same time. Mm. Leaves the cue ball anywhere near that top right corner bag. You're okay. Looking behind it here, anyway, it's you would Jack would be in a world of problems. The cue ball is up there. <coughs> Got a few onlookers now. Obviously, they realise it's approaching the end, so people are interested to see who's going to win. Looks like Luke Cross has finished his match. I'll have to get the uh, scores around the halls in a bit. That's a good shot. He played that as a shot to nothing, leaving the cue ball there where it is. Mm. He knows the yellow goes in the middle, drops in the middle. Yeah, probably a bit of pace onto this one, push the yellow down to the other corner, or jack it out and then play the plants. One of them, one of them shots overall. I think Jack at this point is just praying for another visit to the table on this frame. That's not worked out very well there, I don't think. He's still got the pot. That's a great That's shot. That's another shot there from Neil. Very composed. And this is another one of those pressure balls. Ah, there we go then. Jack's chance. A bit of frustration there by Neil. I think he got the pot angle. We can see the red. Huge opportunity here for Jack. It's a perfectly weighted positional shot. Give himself Great the best shot. chance there. And he was a little bit of a gift perhaps, but he's made the most of the opportunity to make it 14-16. Neil gave that one away in the end. Yeah, he's, he's um, had a couple of them balls today when I've said they're pressure balls and he's, you know, not quite got there with it. It's a bit different when you're out there and you're actually playing for this money. It's, you know, that those things do play in the back of your mind. So, 
balls you expect to pot all day, every day in practice. A little bit more nervy and tentative when you're playing for uh, a big pot. That's right, and then you add on that it's on the stream. That's another factor that plays in. People have got to be watching this later. Oh, the cue ball's the gone cue ball, down. so game on. Chance for Jack here. It's been quite a few foul breaks. Yeah, I think both players will look back on this stream and uh, want to work on that break shot. At a reasonable level where you're dishing up the, the balls and uh, trying to clear the frame down in one visit every time, or most of the time, the break shot is such a huge shot to anyone's game. It's always been a bit of a contention in my own game, losing the cue ball or not potting the ball for break. Mm, that's a bit of a yeah, It's OK, there. that's OK. He's, he's, the only thing he's done there is tied the black up a little bit, but... Yeah. He can he can find the yellow to nudge that out. <coughs> mm. Might try it with this shot. Oh, uh, it's okay, but he's put another put his yellow safe. It's another bit of work now. Diminishing opportunities. It's, it's not really in the best position for a shot here either. It's yeah, and I don't know if he needed to bring the yellow out that soon, uh, the, the, the present to, to develop the bat that soon. But you know, he had the chance then, so he went for it. And Neil's still got a shot there, over red into the middle. That's not easy. He's got three reds by this bottom left-hand cushion. No, that wasn't an easy shot. Jack might fancy this yellow <coughs> by the top <coughs> left cushion. We'll leave him onto the yellow on the top cushion. Maybe. Yeah. It's all hard work from here. Yeah, he's going to have to try and find some sort of... Uh, Safe to contain and shot because they don't go. That's not too bad. He's developed both of those yellows. Neil's got a couple of tricky red balls on the left hand rail, as you can clearly see on the stream. Not ideal. <coughs> this might be a. No. It's uh, maybe a bit too straight into the middle there to get into the reds from this one. It's a big shot here though. Yeah, I think what you're trying to do is is screw into them off this shot. Yes. That's a pretty decent shot to be fair. He's got another tricky positional though because he used to play this one with a bit of pace and they tend to wobble a little bit if you pace them up. Jack's got a chance here now. And they're all set up for him. Yeah, he's got to take this chance as well. He's left him a nice angle on this yellow to the top bag. Yeah, just brings him up the table. Oh, he's going to take this one. Mm. 
He's okay. A massive shot from the last yellow to the black, though. Yeah. Mm. It's not over yet. It's a stark contrast from the uh, free-flowing pool that we saw in the uh, second half of oh, the first what half. What a of shot the that was! Great shot there from Neil down the rail, big time. Or shall we say the second quarter of the match? And if Neil gets this, he'll be three frames ahead again. And he does to make it 17 14. Well, I shall give Mr. Jones the buttons. I'm going to run around and get the rest of the scores in. Probably most of the matches will be finished by now. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in. It's um, approaching the end. Nick Jack just needs to stay with him. Obviously now three frames behind. Needs to uh, claw a couple of these back. Doesn't want to let Neil get near the hill. I think Neil's just gone for a short bathroom break and uh, we shall be back to the action shortly in the 32nd frame of possible 41. I'm sure the neutrals out there would like it to see go down to the wire. I do think that Neil's had slightly the upper hand in the past sort of half dozen frames or so. Uh, probably all goes back to that red that he fluked um, to go 11 all is a uh, bit of a turning point that shot but we don't count Jack off yet he can quickly get those three frames back in a blink of an eye Neil's back in the arena it is Jack to break in the 32nd frame It's another dry one. <coughs> so Neil just trying to work out his first ball here. It's um not pretty from where he is at the moment. I think that was a ripple. Jack needs to really dig in now. He's um, right up against it here at the moment. That's back to Neil. Still on the Rebels. No, he's just knocked that one off. So he's just playing a little container safety there. Just waiting to see who gets the first uh, action inside.
Let's check that one out a little bit. It's okay though. <coughs> <coughs> Jack just needs to keep his concentration there, I think. Doesn't want to be resigned to defeat at this stage. Neil needs one good shot here just to control the cue ball, to put it back in the middle of the table. This looks pretty good to me. Yellow is a buffer, and that's going to be 18, 14. Well, so Neil stretching his lead now. Coming up to the end of the match. I'm going to need something a bit special from Jack here. I've just uh, gone round the hall. We'll have a, a quick look. If I can press the buttons quickly enough. And we'll get these latest results in from around the hall. So Mark Montague lost 11-15 against Gary Sefton. Johan beat Luke Cross 15-9. Connor Davison beat Matthew Richardson 17-10. Ben Lindsay beat Rich Chalk 17-6. And Lee Knapp beat Martin Smith 15-13. And Matt Lambert is beating Daniel Baird 11-6. And that is the only match other than the one in front of your eyes right now, which is still in progress. So Neil got a red down there. Maybe he's looking at these yellows. <coughs> ben Lindsay winning another money match there. The rematch against Rich Chalk. I think Rich was just saying, it was, uh, I was talking to Rich and Luke there, and they were saying that the problem with the table draw uh, on the day is that nobody gets to know the table that they're going to be playing on and, and he was saying that there was a ball's width of run on some of the shots he had where you know if you're trying to play a snooker and then it just ends up a, a whole ball's width out of position to what you expect then it's pretty difficult so an argument in favour of perhaps drawing the table a week early and letting the players have a chance but well, I don't know that argument could go either way yeah, I mean, to be fair, I'm probably on the other side. I disagree. At the end of the day, if neither player knows what table they're playing on, then neither player can practice on it, so getting an advantage. Well, that's it, especially if the player doesn't live local and can't get the yeah. practice in, yet their opponent exactly. can. If you're playing somewhere from Pompey or Salisbury or anywhere further afield, I mean, why is it fair that you, a week before, can, can practice on a table, you know, every night, um, and that player comes in and has a quick knock for 10 minutes before the match starts, and... You're fresh as a daisy on it, you know, so yeah. it's, um, I don't know, I, I think it's a bit a bit fairer. It's just, it's just a case of trying to keep all the tables up to a reasonable standard of play so that, you know, mm. they don't run off, they're brushed before, before a match, etc. Um, you know, and then apart from that, you both got to play on the same table, so you both got the same problems. You know? Yeah, it's the same surprise for everyone, isn't it? Unless you're going to come down here every day and practice on all the tables for an hour each, you know, try and get to yeah, learn all the exactly. tables. And you, have, you know, who's got time for that? Nobody. Yeah. Just to win a 50 quid, 100 quid money match, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to happen, is yeah. it? So you're not going to not gonna be able to get there in any, any reasonable time, are you? Mm. <coughs> Just looking over at um, Jack's body language at the moment, it's a little bit concerning. He's got his arms crossed. He's a little bit annoyed, I think, with the how the last sort of half dozen frames or so have gone. Yeah, I agree, Dave. Sometimes the tables can be a little bit better. However, it is, I'm sure it is difficult um, to try to maintain as many tables as Ronnie has got here. Um, I think it costs about £180 a time to re-cloth, etc. So, you know, it's not all about, obviously, the 
the, the match play all the time. He's a club to run as well. So, and I was speaking to Adam the other week, and he was saying about he was looking at the monetization of tables, and you could get a player who's um, who's got the um, the membership to come down on a Friday night, buy one bottle of water, and spend four hours on a table. You know, and it's like what they get one pound because it's you know a pound a day basically for the membership. So he gets one pound out of the membership and one pound for a bottle of water, and that's it for four hours. Yeah. Whereas a group could come down, you know, five, six, seven, eight lads, uh, you know, and buy a lot of beer on that same table for four hours, and you could get two hundred quid out of them. So, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's tough monetizing these tables at the best of times, I think, and then you need that money to maintain the tables. Yeah, and I think, you know, you've got the difficulty again there of the member obviously takes more care of the table, whereas a group of guys that throw their cues around and there's chalk all over it and potentially can spill a pint all over it, they're not going to care. Or skewer the cloth, Whether yeah. they look after it or not, but, you know, like I said, it's a business to run, so you've got to have a happy medium, I think, between making money and, and keeping the tables um, as best running run position that they can be do you know what I mean mm. if Jack takes his frame here this will be huge because Neil should never ever have missed that black so he just wants one good shot here if he doubles this across and pots that red then it's match on and this could be a turning point in this game looks good that's a great shot and he and Neil will absolutely hate losing this frame yeah because uh, Jack gave him the uh the opportunity for this frame by oh, fouling, Jack, of course, Jack, didn't Jack, he? Jack, but there Jack. you go, that's the frame. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. That would have really hurt Neil if he won that frame. Mm. As it is, Neil's only two frames away from victory now. And maybe that's maybe that's the difference between these two today is, is just a bit of composure, maybe. I mean, every player gets the run of the table and then don't get the run of the table, but... I just think it's been this closing stage. Uh, you know, Jax, can't, you can't fault Jack's tenacity and confidence earlier on in the match, but this, these previous sort of seven, eight frames now, he's, he's kind of just gone off the boil a little bit, lost a cue ball, had a couple of miscued pots, etc. So it's, it's a difficult one. Um, but again, when, whenever you lose a match like this, it's a learning curve and you can only, only improve from it. So yeah. um, a loss sometimes can be... Um, better than a win obviously I appreciate that doesn't resonate with the people that have put money into this today but you know let's be honest Jack's got a, a, a bright future anyway should he even lose this match but as it is it's not over yet uh, Neil still needs two more frames and let's uh, see what happens yeah Dan Hemphill just uh, assuming it was at Kev Butler that uh, single bottle of water dig there but I shall say that Kev's name wasn't the one dropped by Adam in, in personal conversation I'll just say that but uh, yeah yeah, I think um, Jack just showed Neil today that um, that he was starting to lose his composure a bit and and that's been the difference I think that will come with time and you know, maturity on the on the table as his game matures, and I have no idea how at two o'clock in the afternoon you can be that drunk. But <laughs> no, oh, those oh. guys over there on table four are proving me wrong. They might be students. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. Yeah, they've had they've had three <laughs> Smirnoff ices between them. <laughs> um, I, I, I. I don't know. I think from that shot there, can just sort of, he just went for that. Uh, Jack's got to dig deep now. Yeah, he needs to find something from the depths, I think, because <coughs> he's got all these pockets covered by the reds. It's just it's not it's easy. Just looking a touch, just a touch defeated at the moment. And uh, it, it, it's not what we want. 
And we want this to go to the wire. He's got to find a couple of good shots here because the yellow at the bottom of the table is tied up and also he's got one on the side rail here tied up. Just a look from here. another angle there. He went for the skill shot and he was unable to pull it off. There's a lot to ask for. I think Neil's shown up fantastically though today. Like credit where credit's due. Maybe Jack hasn't got the role and let a little bit of frustration creep in, but Neil's been steadfast and consistent. Yeah, I think I can only recall one time when I thought Neil got a bit frustrated. He missed the ball and sort of put his head to the sky and dropped his cue a bit. Yeah, yeah and he, but apart from that, he's, he's he come back after the interval and uh, he was fresh again, wasn't he? Yeah, just roll with the punches. Okay, so Neil is now going to be on the hill. 2014. One more frame to win. And barring a bit of a miracle here by Jack. That's how I think Neil has earned, if he does claim victory, he has earned it here. Yeah, I think, I think, I don't know if Pollard's still here, but go over to Jack and just give him a bit of a look on the shoulder. It's a funny thing to do, I know, but I think, come on, dig in. So this is chance one of seven for the match here for Neil. He's got red. a red down. I think that red might plant into the corner and if it does then he's going to have a bit of a clearish run on the reds apart from the black which looks a bit safe to me. Uh, the black is now not safe. and It's not got a straightforward shot on the red here. He has, that goes oh, in the corner. Oh, okay. yeah. There it is and... Yes. He's flowing as well, isn't he? He knows he's on the hill. The problem is, is that when you when you're on the hill and you've got a nice little cushion that he has got, six frame cushion, you you you've got less pressure on these balls. He might become complacent. If it was 2019, then then it's a different story. But with with such a margin now, he can let his arm go a little bit more. I think all he needs to do here is just be mindful on how he gets on that black. And that could be the match. Three pots away from £8,600. Thank you for joining in at this juncture. He's got a difficult double here, though. Oh, yeah. He's uh got a natural angle to get on the black, though, off two cushions if the double goes in <coughs> and it's uh, absolutely flew in and he's got a shot on this black into the middle bag and this is for the win well break oh, oh a bit of adrenaline in that one I think yeah. <laughs> we have a rowdy crowd even getting excited. Oh dear. Oh Let's go. Oh Quiet, dear. please. Well, he's fluked it in. He's got a plant now. That's exactly what he played for. Yeah. He said, Gods of Paul, you owe me something. Come on. Jack's not happy, I can tell you that for nothing. He's okay with that. He's, he's played a shot I wasn't expecting there. I thought he was going to just go for a big heave-ho plant. So it was a Hemp Hill backed Neil here, I think, by the looks of it. He wants him to send us money before he writes a nasty status about him. Ooh. 
Oh, I bet he's really scared, Dan. Oh, yeah. Dan Hemphill's going to come after you. Crosswords on Facebook. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Mixed mix feelings about that. It's like, do you want to do you want to share so much? I don't know. But it is frustrating when people don't honour the deal. You've seen that one, haven't Neil's looking at that comment, Dan, by the way, and he's he's logged it in the grey matter. Yeah. Right, let's push on for another frame here, Jack. You can pot these balls. I know that for sure. The fans want to see a few more frames. We want a decider. Well, I don't think Neil wants to take it that far, though. Oh, dear. Losing seven frames on the bounce won't be very nice. Jack's playing at the moment with nothing to lose. Oh, brilliant oh. shot there. Is he going to hold for the black? Yeah, he that is. looks OK. Slow down. That looks OK. Well, we've got some more pool to come your way, ladies and gentlemen, as we 15 20 to Jack Coop. Yeah, he's not letting them have it. That should be 19 16. He knows it after that previous frame when he missed that last red. He's still in it. That might give him a bit of a G up. He looked defeated in that last frame. Yeah, I just think after that 11-11 intermission that they both went on, just Neil came back the stronger of the two there. And um, Jack's been fighting a bit harder to try and <coughs> stay in the match. But he's got a chance here. He's breaking. If it goes 16-20, then it's, it's two frames on the bounce. Stranger things have happened at sea. Have they? They have, yeah. <laughs> I can vouch for that. As a Matlow. <laughs> yeah. Eight and a half years in the Royal Navy. Yeah, he's a skate. Yeah. Yeah, he skate. <laughs> got to count his fingers. Oh, he's got a good break here, I think. Yeah, I and mean... These yellows look good, don't they? Or Yeah, if mm. he just finds one decent pot here, he can go for it. Just, just keep your composure, Jack. Just don't give it up yet, mate. Don't give it up. Oh, it drops! Oh, it's oh, dropped. Oh, oh. He, we was all on the edge of our seats there. Eh? Yeah. Ooh, lovely little bit of spin, city there. He got nicely down onto these. This yellow here, this bottom yellow. Kind of in the middle of both though at the moment, so he's just working out how he wants to go about it he's jacking into it ah ah oh, oh, oh. has he come too far he's not going to be happy if he has I think he could take that into the middle can't he oh he's quite close to that red he is close mm. oh well, this is uh, opportunity number two of seven for Neil. Opportunity knocks. Well, these yellows are very potable for Jack if he does get another return to the table. But these reds are looking quite good here. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Rocket Rackers TV, and tickle that notification bell. Tickle? Tickle it, yeah. Just give it a little tickle under the chin. You know you want to. Oh! This is... Wow, can he... No, I don't no, think he's he left a shot there. And there's no it's a really, really difficult safety as well, especially with that red over the corner bag up here. 
Here we go then. Trebs. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, there you go. Played that. He's got Play a chance. He, if he played that. He's got a chance. He didn't play that. He Does the yellow him. sneak past the red into the corner? Or can he just slightly hit the knuckle and then pop it out and take jam the it through the red into the bag? It's a big shot to stay in the match. And it's not gone in. Oh, there's a little bit of work now for Neil to do. He's got to figure out that red by the yellow. Yeah, Neil's got him in a world of pain here because that yellow's just not going anywhere. He might even just be tempted to just roll the red over the corner. Yeah, He's got a lot Jack of options now. Let Jack develop it. Yeah. You can go for it. The red goes past the corner and then he can be on one of these two. Okay. Dan Hemphill's hoping that uh Jack's back is against the wall here. Yeah. Baker will just take his time. He's got a few frames to make it happen. Oh. Well he's got his yellow down. Well, the cue ball's left the table, and I don't think that's going to be enough to stop Neil here now. <coughs> yeah, the uh, the right end could very well be on the wall here. Barring a drastic positional shot, this could be the match winner. Hats off to Jack putting up a fantastic match here against Neil today but we've got a couple of balls to go that looks pretty good that's a good good positional shot and given what we've seen here today by Neil you, you'd expect him to take these yeah just one solid corner ball for the black for the win And he makes it 21-15 and takes the money. So well yeah. done there to Neil Baker. Great composed performance from Neil today. Just the last last third of that match, Jack just wasn't still at the races. He done well to keep up with him during the middle of the match, not letting him get in cl uh, more than two frames ahead of him. However just didn't get that run at the end and that's where you need it the most so very unfortunate but hats off to him for playing for that sort of money um, against a very um, seasoned player as in Neil yeah it takes uh, grande cojones certainly to step up with 4300 pound whether it's your money or someone else's it's, uh, it's still a big uh, it's still a big uh, challenge for anyone Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Just to remind you, we have another match coming up at 3 p.m. That is Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes. That's a race to 17 for £400 there. So stay tuned. This excellent money match between <coughs> Jack Cooper and Neil Baker has been brought to you live from Rocket Ronnie's in Southampton with over 30 tables of various disciplines to play on, dartboards, TVs for live BT sports, fully licensed bar, no memberships required, so just pop on down, 10 till midnight, Saturday to Monday to Saturday, and 10 till 10 Sunday. Thank you very much, Aaron, for joining us. Have you got any closing remarks? Yeah, just wanted to let everybody know that um, Portsmouth are playing the mighty Wickham Wanderers at 3 o'clock this afternoon in... Uh, the biggest league of them all in the uh, in the English sports football league, uh, League One. League One, that's right, number <laughs> one, <laughs> League <where> One. <laughs> league One. <laughs> Come on, uh, you Blues. Probably where we're going to be remaining as well for the next season. For um, the foreseeable, yeah. Uh, unless we can win every game from here until the end, we might make the playoffs. 
But as they say, win or lose, up the blues. Up the blues. <laughs> yeah. Blue army. I'm sure the scum will uh, sit comfortably in the Prem for another season or two as well. So yeah. yeah. no derby day unless we find each other in the FA Cup through some miracle. You all right, you all right Ben? Yeah, good cheers. So yeah. it's livening up down at Rocky, Rocket Ronnie's now, isn't it, eh? Yeah, we've got a few more games going on now. Um, there's some more afternoon matches coming. We've got Flax running against Josh Barnes coming here in a minute for £400. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in um, from a great venue here, Rocket Ronnie's, uh, on Southampton High Street. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the stream. Uh, we will bring in you more um, action from probably around the bazaars, different venues. Um, we are um, have been enticed to go into the Wollstone Trades Club to do a couple of money games. Um, Maureen there is very keen to see us um, get our equipment out. Yeah, we'll see what we can I work mean, get out get our there. tackle out. I mean, yeah. get our <laughs> balls out. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she's looking forward to us to going down there. Um, we're going to bring you some more from the Southampton Regional Pool League with Pete Elliott. Um, so more and bigger, better things to come from Rocket Rackers TV. So please help us where you can. Like and subscribe and just give us as much support as you can. Uh, Lee's put a lot of effort into it and uh, thanks for all of you joining in today and especially congratulations to Neil Baker for winning 21-15 Thank you very much Aaron thank you for your excellent commentary and I hope to hear from you again soon I'm sure you will, good night all Thank you everyone let's just uh, have a quick look at those morning session results again I'm not sure if Daniel Baird and Matt Lambert has finished playing, but we will bring you that result in the afternoon stream. Another little shout out for the PDSA. Please donate generously if you're looking for someone to support this year. A way to make your conscience feel good. We are coming up with Simon Flaxman versus Josh Barnes. Race to 17 for £400 at 3pm. Gives me 10 minutes to go to the toilet. Lovely jubbly. We will be joined by Simon Ayers for commentary on that match. Simon's always got lots of insightful things to say. He's a great commentator. We enjoy having him very much. So please stay tuned for that one. And don't forget... You've been watching Rocket Rackers TV. Thank you for tuning in. Please like the video, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, do all the social media things. We very much appreciate it. And I hope you have a good day. Bye. Love you.